All right, let's talk about something that gets all of us at some point. You need to get your laptop screen up on a big TV and it just doesn't work. Well, we're gonna fix that today. By the time we're done here, you'll be able to walk into any room and connect to any screen like a pro. You know the feeling, right? You've got the big presentation ready, or maybe it's movie night and everyone's waiting. You plug everything in, you turn it on, and you're met with absolutely nothing. Just a big, black, empty screen mocking you. That little wave of panic starts to creep in. We've all been there. Well, that feeling officially ends today. We're gonna walk through the exact steps to connect pretty much any laptop, whether it's a Windows machine or a MacBook, so you can share your screen with zero stress. Let's do this. So first things first, you really only have two ways to do this. You can go wired or you can go wireless. Each one has its place. And really, it all boils down to one simple choice. You've got the wired way, usually with an HDMI cable. This is your go-to for rock solid, can't fail maximum stability. If it absolutely positively has to work right now, a cable is your best friend. Then you've got the wireless way over Wi-Fi. This is all about freedom, flexibility, and no messy cords. So let's start with path number one, the wired way. We're calling this the rock star of reliability for a reason. An HDMI cable is, hands down, the most dependable way to get a crisp, high quality picture on that big screen. Okay, so if you're on a Windows laptop, you're up first. Don't worry, this is super, super simple. You're just four little steps away. Step one, plug that HDMI cable right into your laptop. Two, plug the other end into the TV. Now three, and this is where so many people get stuck, grab the TV remote and switch it to the right HDMI input. Finally, here's the magic trick. On your keyboard, hold down the Windows key and then press the letter P. That's your secret weapon. When you hit Windows P, you'll basically get two main choices. Duplicate does exactly what it says. It creates a perfect twin of your laptop screen on the TV. This is what you want for most presentations. Extend, on the other hand, is really cool. It gives you a totally fresh, empty desktop on the TV. It's like adding a second monitor to your setup. Just pick the one that fits what you're trying to do. All right, let's switch it up. MacBook users, it's your turn. The idea is exactly the same, but the how is just a little bit different. And yeah, you might need a little adapter for this. For you Mac folks, some older MacBooks actually have an HDMI port, so you're good to go. Just plug it in. But for most of the newer ones, you're going to need a little dongle, a USB-C to HDMI adapter. They're easy to find. Once you're plugged in, your Mac is usually smart enough to figure it all out. But if you want to tweak things, just pop into system settings and click on displays. OK, on to path number two, the wireless way. This is for all of you who want to cut the cord and connect with that sweet, sweet freedom of Wi-Fi. On a Windows machine, the magic behind this is a technology called Miracast. It sounds kind of techy, but don't worry, it's already built into most modern laptops and smart TVs. You already have it. Now, listen up, because this is the most important part. For this to work, your laptop and your TV have to be on the exact same Wi-Fi network. Once you've confirmed that, here's another killer shortcut for you. Press the Windows key and the letter K. A menu will slide out, showing all the wireless displays it can find. Just click on your TV, you might have to click allow on the TV screen, and boom, you're in. And over in the Apple world, MacBook users have their own ridiculously easy system for this. It's called AirPlay. And you guessed it, rule number one is exactly the same. Make sure your MacBook and your TV are on the same Wi-Fi network. Then, just look up at the menu bar at the top of your screen for the AirPlay icon. It looks like a little rectangle with a triangle at the bottom. Click that, pick your TV from the list, and sometimes it'll ask you to type in a code that pops up on the TV screen. That's it. It's almost too easy. But, you know, this is technology, and sometimes things just don't cooperate. So, what do you do when it goes wrong? Don't sweat it. Let's run through a few quick fixes. Okay, let's play detective. If you're using a cable and get no signal, first make sure the cable is pushed in all the way on both ends. Then double check you're on the right TV input. If you're trying to connect wirelessly and it just won't work, 99% of the time it's that Wi-Fi thing. Make sure they're on the same network. And if that doesn't work, just restart both devices. For you MacBook users, if your adapter is giving you grief, sometimes the cheaper off-brand ones can be flaky. Using an official Apple one or a highly rated one usually solves it. And A, to save yourself a future headache, just keep these things in mind. Make sure your laptop software is up to date. 
Same for your TV. Check for firmware updates every now and then. The companies are always fixing little bugs. And of course, the golden rule of all IT, when in doubt, a good old-fashioned restart of both the laptop and the TV works, well, it works wonders. And that's pretty much it. You've got the wired way, you've got the wireless way, you know the shortcuts, you know what to do when things get weird. You are now officially in control of that big screen. So that big TV is no longer a technical challenge. It's not a source of panic. It's just a blank space ready for your presentation, your favorite movie, your photos, whatever. The screen is now your canvas. So I'll just leave you with this one question. Now that you know how to connect to any screen, anywhere, without even thinking about it, what's the next big idea you're gonna share with everyone? Thanks for hanging out.